Hi, this is Jeff Howald. Today I'm going to show you some of the characteristics of a pre-war one-piece flange banjo. And these were made between 1929 and the last one was sold around 1944, even though they quit making parts around 1938 or so. So um, we'll start with the, the first banjo, and this is an RB, which means regular banjo, 75, and this banjo was made about 1938 or 39 in that area. And R means it's regular and means it's a five string banjo. This also is an original flathead banjo. And the reason I'm showing you this is this is kind of the holy grail. And then we're gonna show you some other pre-war banjos that uh, are at different levels and actually some that are affordable uh, to purchase. Now this banjo, which is really worn, might sell for around 75 or 80,000. And if it were in really good condition, the most that one of these has ever brought is about 150,000. So I'll just play something on it just for the heck of it. <laughs> these banjos are constructed and we're going to need to do some close-ups to do this so uh, and this this uh, video may be a little disjointed because to pick up the different banjos I'm not gonna to have to stop and either get up or Andy's gonna give it to me okay so let's look at the uh, the pot and since uh, a lot of you have Gibson banjos or copies of Gibson banjos you'll see that the parts on your banjo and this banjo look identical, okay? So we have an original Presto tailpiece. Now, if it's an original five string, it has a hole right in there, a factory hole. And uh, then you have a one piece armrest, which is this right here. And then you have a uh, pot metal flange. This is the flange right here. And I'm gonna take the uh, resonator off and I'm gonna flip the banjo over for just a second and uh, okay now these flanges were all made on a machine that was at the Gibson factory and that machine still is in existence and has made flanges I believe up to 2010 they had to go through and re rework it but the point is that the original flathead a la that Don Reno would have wanted to play uh, Earl Scruggs played and every banjo player alive that can afford it almost, I'm sure there's somebody that doesn't have one, pretty much has one of these and in some cases might have 10 or 12 of these banjos. Okay, so the, the parts are the one piece flange, which you see this, and we're doing a close up again. Okay, then we have a three ply hard rock maple shell and we'll get an ultra close up of this. And this shell is five eighths inch, inches thick, okay? And it has three plies. Now, sometimes there would be lines when they glued it together and they would stick uh, another uh, ply. It's not a ply, but it's just a cap on it. And it makes it look like it's five ply, but really they're, they're three ply. Okay, so that's the shell. And then of course you have the original pre-war tone ring, which you'll see right there kind of see there, okay. And if you want to look at the side of the banjo, and you'll see that the other part of the tone ring is right here. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a banjo that Gibson made here in a little while that doesn't have this. Okay, so that's that. Okay, now, the, um, the other part of the banjo is the resonator. Okay, and of course, that probably looks like any other resonator. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn the resonator around, and in this case, 
this is just a little bit of trivia, but it has a Made in USA sticker. And what that means is that the banjo was made in the USA and it was exported to a foreign country. I don't know where this one went, okay? Now, let's see if I can explain this. The resonator itself is made out of poplar, and you can do a close-up of this, okay? It's kind of a plain wood, okay? So it's poplar, and I don't know if I can quite point it out, but you've got a veneer here. You've got the another piece of wood on the edge, and then you have a piece of wood on the back, okay? So they made these resonators, and then they put a veneer on them. So a mahogany banjo is basically a poplar resonator with a mahogany veneer on it, okay? Now, I'll show you another thing that they, they did, okay? So that, that's that. Now, they made what was called a TB PB RB 11 and once again, if you look at it, you'll see that the inside looks like the other, other one, except this one was spray painted blue, okay? Once again, poplar resonator, and in this case, these were made in the 30s. People thought it'd be cool to put this uh, very thin laminate of plastic on it, and of course, we refer to that as mother of toilet seat, okay? Now, I'll give you the, the what's the point of all this? Let me, I'm going to lay this banjo down for just a second so I don't cause it any problems. All right, so... The components of a pre-war are the tone ring, the shell, the neck, and the resonator, okay? And each of those contributes to the sound. So if you have, and the, the two most, or the three most important parts are the resonator, the tone ring, and the shell, okay? So what people have done is they have found a banjo that has the same resonator, which I just illustrated with that other banjo, and I'm going to show you one other resonator just for, uh, for grins. Okay, so this came off of what is called a Model 2. Model 2 did not have a toned ring, but once again, you have the poplar inside, and they put a veneer of walnut on the outside, okay? Now, we're going to do one video of each of these banjos so you can hear it and see it in more detail. Okay, so if you get a what we call a PB or TB11 which has this resonator, okay, and you open it up, okay, I'm gonna go pull this one you're gonna see that it has the same three-ply hard rock maple shell, and it has the same poplar resonator with the mother of toilet seat veneer on it, okay? So what we've done here at uh, Banjo Warehouse is to try to figure out a way that you could get the pre-war sound and if you have a high quality tone ring, such as a Uber tone ring, a Blaylock tone ring, a Sloan tone ring, and you take that new tone ring and put it on a two model, which is walnut, a one, which is maple, and these are all one piece flange, or an 11, which would have the mother of toilet seat. If you put that tone ring on the same shell and the same poplar resonator, you're gonna get the pre-war sound. It won't be quite as pre-war as if you spent $100,000, but you be, would be amazed how, how close it is, and it's different than anything else. And we've had many customers who've bought two or three banjos from us, and then they bought a pre-war banjo, and they sold all their banjos. So once you get a pre-war banjo that's set up properly, you tend to never play anything but a pre-war banjo because they have that magical sound, okay? And uh, the, the least expensive way to do that is to buy an 11, which is the one with this shell, okay? With this resonator, and put a tone ring in it and then go out and buy a neck. 
that, that's the least expensive. And then if you take the, if you buy one that has new parts, if they take the original parts off, which have value, and put newer parts, which really doesn't affect the sound, then that brings the price down even more. So you can get that pre-war sound for, you know, under, under $4,000 by, by doing that. And the thing you need to make sure is you use a high quality tone ring. The fit of the tone ring is extraordinarily important. So somebody has to put the tone ring on that particular banjo. And if you decide to switch tone rings, you have to have a professional do the measurements and make sure that that second tone ring fits properly on the shell, okay? Um, the second thing is to you need to have a high quality neck and let me show you this one thing, the neck joint right here. Okay. So the neck right here is touching the rim, okay? And that has to be uh, a really snug fit because sound is transferred across that. So you need a high quality neck that plays well. You need it fit properly to the banjo. The tone ring has to be fit properly to the banjo. And then, um, ideally, if you have somebody that really knows what they're doing, adjust the banjo, um, the head tension, put the correct bridge on it, adjust the tailpiece properly, and I won't get into too much of the coordinator system, but essentially, if, if you want to raise or lower the action, you can tighten or loosen this rod right here. It's a coordinator rod, and it essentially warps the shell. <laughs> Okay, so you don't want to do it too much. So once again, this gets back into having a professional do that for you. So th that's that's pretty much it. Uh, I did play the, the first banjo, so I'll, I'll play um, one of these banjos. I'll play two of the 11s because they're the least expensive. And uh, let's, let's see what this sounds like. And... Uh, might even, uh, if we're lucky, which we probably won't be. As I was saying, if we're lucky, the thing will be in tune, but of course it isn't, so we're not lucky today. If you're seriously interested in getting into the pre-war tone, we do have about six or seven pre-war type banjos in stock. And if you come to the banjo warehouse, which we're about five minutes from the airport, you can then play these different banjos. And one of the things that's real important is you play them a little differently, the way you, you attack the notes and stuff. So if you come here, not only can you play the different pre-wars and hear the different sounds, including I'll let you play the original one. Uh, I can show you some uh, pointers on how to get the best tone out of a banjo based on where you place your hands. So let's hear this one. some people look for and it's a it's another 11 that has a new neck on it and hold on for a second here 
And uh, I'll just go ahead and use the same resonator. Okay, now what's happening with this particular banjo, and once again, we're gonna need uh, a close-up just to show this. Um, so what we're gonna show you is the these 11s did not have a tone ring in them, okay? So what you have is a the three-ply shell, which we discussed, the 5 8 inch shell, and you take it to someone who makes great tone rings, which I personally prefer, excuse me, the Uber HR30, but there are some, there are other fine tone rings out there, and they will put that tone ring onto this shell, okay? Now, some people, if, the, if you have uh, back problems or if you're in a situation where you really don't have to play that loud or powerfully, they will not put a tone ring in it, okay? And this is very popular. So this one doesn't have a tone ring in it. The banjo is about three times louder than the guitar, and it's the loudest instrument in a band. So if you buy an instrument like this, don't put a tone ring in it, and it's 10 or 15% softer, it's still gonna be louder than anything else, okay? So here, let's play this one. If you do decide to vis vis visit us, make sure you give me a couple days notice so I can be here because to show you all these banjos, show you the different techniques to play them where you have sufficient time to understand it, it's going to take usually about four hours. So I need to make sure I'm here and there's no problem with that. Uh, you can fly in, drive in. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can uh, contact Andy at 404. 3725482 or you can call me at 404-218-8580 and uh, if if you uh, are interested in a pre-war look at the other videos and if you call me do me a favor and tell me what numbers on the video because people will call and say hey man I saw that uh, that 11 and it really looked nice and they're looking at a video that we shot two years ago, and of course the banjo's no longer here. So if you can uh, just write down that number, uh, then that will help me locate it. I can actually put my hands on it, and I can answer any questions. Well, that's it. You can uh, make an appointment seven days a week, and if you come to the airport, let us know, and as I say, we're about seven minutes away. So you guys have a great day, and we'll talk to you later.